So now in this video, we're going to charge this uh, super capacitor bank here with hand crank generators right there. So first we're going to use this one, this one, not as good as uh, this blue one over here, but we will get to that coming up. So we have a couple alligator clips. This one, so I don't forget, has a diode attached to it. This is a shot key diode and it can handle 15 amps of current and that 45 volts means when it is reverse bias especially with DC it should block about 45 volts uh, reverse bias so we're going to use it forward bias we want it to conduct when it conducts it's a shot key diode so it's only going to block about 0.3 volts or so so not the 0.7 volts approximately of a rectifier dial so handles high current one uh, thing about these though is they don't tend to block as much voltage reverse bias as rectifier dials. They're not quite as good but they block less going forward and this particular one can handle high current. So we'll get to that coming up. There you can see that's on the positive side and then we have an alligator clip to the negative side. Let's clip the black jumper here right there. So these are six series 500 farad supercapacitors according to the label there. So they're in series we get a fraction of their capacitance. So probably what is it like 80 farad or so if they are actually 500 farad. And the reason why they are in series they are only rated for 2.7 volts each one of them. But you put them in series they split up the voltage. So ultimately we can get 16.2 volts and this board will hopefully keep them balanced and even better yet hopefully keep them from reverse charging by accident and overcharging so I don't know how well it does any of that but hopefully it does I just bought it all as one unit in fact my most popular video was just looking at one of these so we're gonna take the diode here shot key diode we're going to point it this way and just clip this side to right there to the positive side of the capacitor bank right there we have our connection now we can read the voltage that is the main point of that right there now I have a hand crank generator right here pretty straightforward it has a USB outlet so they say you can charge phones with this it's better in my opinion to charge a power bank power banks like erratic voltages more than phones do and then use the power bank later on to charge a phone as needed so just a USB and then the other side are alligator clips so pretty easily we can just clip the black one to the probe there and first I'm going to show that uh, what's gonna happen I'm gonna go right to where the alligator clip that goes right there connect to that and you'll see we got that red light coming on there so current is going into that unit we don't want that you even saw a little bit of a voltage drop that's gonna drain the uh, super capacitors and looks like it's only lighting an LED my other generator the handle starts turning when you apply power this one looks like it's just lighting an LED and so probably not wasting as much energy but we don't know for sure so I'm gonna clip it to the other side of the diode and then that will let positive go in to the capacitor and then when I'm not doing anything none of the capacitor energy other than whatever leaks will uh, go into here so you do kinda see a little glow there so I think just a speck of current yep it's gone so it doesn't block as much as a rectifier but uh, very little so I hope you can see that red any case that's it we are done wiring this up right now and so we have the positive side right there and negative right there and then they go to the super capacitor and the meter also plugged there can measure the voltage and now you're gonna see the most annoying thing about this in fact this is the main annoying thing because I think this was only like two or three dollars it wasn't very expensive you can hear how loud that was and I think the way I was holding it it came loose internally so this is cheap as I said it's really cheap 
and then I bought three of them and two of them are louder than the other one and whatnot but uh, it gets the job done so it has the USB plug that is nice I have a, another hand crank generator that is uh, better but it doesn't have a USB you have to uh, figure out a way to connect it up now we have this one here so these are my wires I just did a video looking at this and we'll zoom in to clear it up we can go up to 15 volts and one of the interesting things is we got uh, the wires there this is not uh, regulated voltage from my last test but this one is whatever I set this to that will be the voltage there they're also USB there and the USB outputs the voltage that you set right there so we might as well go to 15 volts because this supercapacitor bank can handle up to 16.2 so we'll still be safe and we're monitoring the voltage with the meter it might start beeping soon so I'm going to turn it off and on and so it's a long obnoxious handle uh, it's going to be easy to turn but you're not going to be able to see me turning it I don't have a uh, stable workbench with good lighting and stuff to uh, film so I'm just going to keep my improvised uh, platform there with the lighting that I like so I got the USB plugged in there the setting set to 15 volts so even though it's USB it does not hold 5 volts no matter what you actually have to set it to 5 volts for the USBs to be 5 volts and uh, in any case I'm going to turn the crank and there you can see the voltage rapidly rising right there and I'm holding this with my hands and I can still turn it it's got some resistance as you can hear it's nowhere near as loud as the other one but you can see the voltage go up and when I stop it dips down a bit so there may be some uh, resistances involved that show a voltage buildup but there we got 3.327 and let's crank it some more and there we go 3.4 so it is rising in real time for the uh, most part but uh, any case it's that simple to charge super capacitors you just whatever current you get into them there is some leakage they aren't perfect they'll self discharge a little bit over time I probably was not three volts to begin with uh, maybe I was six or something and they they dwindled down a little bit more I think these capacitors really like to finally get down to 0 0.7 volts over a long time but if you charge them they're gonna hold a charge for a while and you can get the charge that you put in you can get it back out the thing is though as we charge it the voltage goes up as you discharge it the voltage goes down it goes down with charge it goes up with charge the charge is directly related to how much current you fed it and how long and then when it outputs the voltage will be related to how much current you use and how long it's just going to steadily go down as you use current and so that's uh, just something to be aware of with super capacitors but uh, they're really easy to use as you can see they're really easy to charge but uh, ideally you would want this right here so I'm going to uh, I have the obnoxious handle so it's gonna be a little more difficult let's zoom back a little bit more but uh, let's give it a quick touch and short it and uh, so we see a voltage drop there and so it's going down so probably a fair amount of current was flowing right there and hopefully I didn't damage anything it should hopefully work the same now but uh, yeah luckily this one the motor doesn't turn when you do that and now when we turn it the voltage goes up and we stop we can see how much charge we get so in any case hope you enjoyed the video Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.